Hey kids, welcome back. We are in week five of our series, I'm in Trouble, and I'm really excited for this week because we are gonna be talking all about strengths and weaknesses. I wonder how strong you are. What is the heaviest thing that you can lift? Maybe you can finally carry the gallon of milk in from the car when you go grocery shopping with your mom and dad. Or if you have a sibling, have you ever tried to pick them up to see if you're strong enough to pick them up yet? Or maybe you have a big dog or another pet that you like to carry around. Sometimes it is so fun to see how strong we are by doing different things. But today, we're not gonna only talk about how we are strong, we're also gonna be talking about our weaknesses. So today you're gonna learn some important truths all about strengths and weaknesses, and Josh is gonna tell you a little bit more about what that is all about. So let's check in with Josh this morning. Hello there, everybody. Good to see you again. It's me, Josh, in the series, I'm in Trouble. As we all know, life is just full of trouble. You're telling me one time there was an armadillo on my toothbrush. How did an armadillo get on your toothbrush? Well, he was using it. Why was he using it? Well, he's my roommate and needed to borrow it. Your roommate is an armadillo. Armadillo soup is delicious. Hey, you stay away from Eugene. Anyway, have you ever noticed that there are people in this life that are just naturally strong? Yeah, like me, bro. Check it out. Not exactly what I meant. You know what I'm talking about. People that are just really big and strong. They work out a lot and they have huge muscles. Like this guy. <laughs> or her. Here we go. <laughs> Don't make me angry. Or these guys. <laughs> this is making me physically ill. Well, boys and girls, it's true. Not everyone has the same strengths. But today we're learning about a guy who's famous for his strength. You may have heard about him before. Sylvester Stallone. Hey, no, this is good to be here. No. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Ah, oh, this is fantastic. No. Lucille Ball. Me. Lucille Ball. What? I don't know. Now we're not talking about those guys and girl. We're talking about a guy in the Bible who's known for his great strength and his long hair. Who could it be? <gasps> Chuck Norris. No. How many times do I have to tell you guys? Chuck Norris is not in the Bible. That joke is so old anyway. No, we're talking about a guy named Samson. Oh, oh okay. duh. Uh, no, that makes more sense. Samson was incredibly strong and he did amazing things, but his strength wasn't enough. Samson's story is very sad when you think about it. So what does he do? And what should we do when all of our strengths and our talents mean nothing? We may not be physically strong, like me, but we all have things that we do well. What do we do in life when those strengths and talents still leave us with nothing? You're gonna find out in today's story. So sit tight and pay attention for the action-packed ending. We're gonna learn that even though we may be weak, his strength is Perfect. Man, I wish I was big and strong like Samson. Well, say no more, my good man. Wait, what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna boom ya. Hey, y'all, look at me. Woo! Y'all are so tiny. Whoa. That just ain't right. Change him back now. You guys are no fun. So today, we're learning all about how when we are weak, God is strong. God is always strong for us. Even though we might not be strong enough to handle all the trouble that comes our way, God is always strong enough to handle the trouble that we're in. God is always strong enough. Now, you're going to learn all about that in our lesson today. So right now, let's find out what it is that what you gotta know today. What you gotta know What you gotta know What you gotta know My name is Wiggy Pop, and I'm here to have a rockin' time teaching you what you gotta know. Today, we're talking about how God will give you strength when you feel weak. So every time today you hear somebody ask you what you gotta know, you tell them this. I may be weak, but my God is strong. Oh man, look 
at these wimpy muscles. I feel so weak. Oh yeah? Well look at these rockin' solid muscles. I'm so strong. <laughs> whoa, 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 guys. We're not talking about muscles. We're talking about how when we face trouble, sometimes we just don't feel like we're strong enough to make it through. Oh, okay. okay. That's right. We're talking about how God is strong even when we're weak. He will give us the strength we need to make it through our time of trouble. So every time today you hear somebody ask you what you gotta know, you tell them this. I may be weak, but my God is strong. And that right there is what you gotta know. My name is Wiggy Pop, and I'll see you next time. Rock on! What you gotta know? That's right, boys and girls. We may be weak, but our God is always strong. So let's get ready for our Bible story because it's all about someone who's super strong. Our Bible story is in the book of Judges and it's in chapter 16. And it's all about, remember, it's all about Samson. Now you might have heard about Samson before. Some of you might have heard his story, some of you may not have. But did you know that Samson was the strongest man in the Bible? He was super, super strong. Wouldn't you love to be the strongest person? I know some of you would really like to be the strongest person. Well, do you know why Samson was strong? He was strong because God gave him incredible strength. This is what God told Samson. He said, as long as you never cut your hair, you will have your strength. So all his life, his entire life, Samson never cut his hair or had a haircut. And Samson's life was full of crazy adventures. Samson had a very full life of crazy adventures and God had given him incredible strength throughout his life. And one day, Samson, he met a girl and he fell in love with her. She was very pretty and Samson really liked her and her name was Delilah. And see, there was some trouble. And this is what it says. The trouble was that the Philistines, and those were Samson's enemies, they had made a deal with Delilah that if she could find out what gave Samson his secret strength, what the secret was to his strength, that they would give her a lot of money. So they wanted Delilah to find out what gave Samson his strength. And they said they would give her a lot of money if she found this out. So Delilah kept asking Samson to tell her what the secret was. And Samson told her a couple of things and he was tricking her. First he said if she used some ropes that weren't dried, that that would take his strength away. But that was a trick, that didn't work. Then he told her that if she used brand new ropes, that that would be his strength and that was another trick. And then she said a couple more, he said a couple more things. And finally, after she bugged him and bugged him and bugged him, Samson finally told her that it was his hair that gave him his strength. Well, guess what happened? Delilah cut Samson's hair off and he lost all his strength. It says, when she did cut his hair off, Samson's strength left him and the Philistines rushed in and captured him. See, the Philistines found out that Samson's strength was gone, so they went and got him. Remember, they were his enemies. So they went in and got Samson. And it got even worse than that for Samson. So they captured Samson and they took him away and they gouged out his eyes to make him blind. And they made him grind grain. It was a terrible situation, so now Samson has no strength left. They actually gouged his eyes out so he couldn't see anything. And now he was super weak and he was chained to a grain mill and he had to grind grain with no strength and no sight. Samson was in big trouble. He was really in big trouble. He was weak, blind, and bound by chains. However, the Philistines were thrilled to have their enemy, their strong enemy captured and weakened. They decided to throw a huge party to celebrate because they were happy to have Samson in this position. And at the party, the king's officials said to the prison guards, this is what they said, bring out Samson so we can make fun of him. And so they did. They went and got Samson and they brought him out and they were making fun of him. And this was really sad for Samson. This was a, a terrible, terrible trouble for him to be in. 
But when he arrived at the party, he asked the young servant, who was leading him around, to place his hands on the two pillars that supported the roof on the building so he could rest. So he, Samson asked them to put him against the pillars so he could put his hands on there so that he could rest, so he could feel where he was. Well, while Samson was standing there, blind and weak, he looked up to heaven and he prayed to God. And do you know what Samson prayed for? Oh, I bet you could figure it out. Listen to what he prayed for. Samson said, God, strengthen me one more time. And guess what? God gave Samson the strength he needed right then. Even in his weakness and his blindness, he looked up to God and he asked for strength and God gave him the strength he needed. And guess what Samson did? Listen to this. Samson pushed on the pillars as hard as he could so that the entire temple would collapse, defeating his enemies once and for all. It worked. See, God gave Samson the strength when he needed it. When Samson had no strength of his own and he was weak, he prayed to God and God gave him the strength that he needed. God's strength was exactly what Samson needed in that moment and he defeated the Philistine, Philistines one final time. And today, we're gonna learn that we can be just like Samson. When we are weak, God is strong and God's strength never runs out. So let's learn all about that. So first we're gonna check out what our power verse is and then we'll get into the rest of our lesson. Thank you, thank you. Oh, please have a seat, wonderful. Hold your applause. Oh, welcome back. I am the actor and today I am going to teach you a wonderful power verse. If you want to be a great method actor like me, all you need to do is listen closely and learn the power verse. Today's power verse says, My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. What a wonderful, fantastic power verse. Now if there's one thing I've learned as the greatest method actor of all times, it's that the best way to memorize your lines, or the power verse in this instance, is to do it in character. So let's find out what today's character shall be. Let's see. Ah oh, yes, today's character is my Uncle Rufus. Of course, what a nice guy. But it's not true acting, thank you. <laughs> okay, today's character is really a snake. Haha, <laughs> I love this one. Okay, boys and girls, you have to say everything with so many S's, okay? Let's say the power verse on the count of three. One, two, three. My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Acting, thank you. Good job, boys and girls. Now it is time for me to get going, but I have a problem. Someone has tied my shoelaces together while I've been sitting here. Acting, thank you. I don't even wear shoes. Okay, goodbye, everyone. Exit stage left. Where is left? I I'm gonna go with this. Okay, boys and girls, how many of you have ever watched a superhero movie? I bet there are some of you that really like superhero mo movies. See, superheroes have some kind of superpower, right? They can do something that's bigger and stronger and braver than, than people, than most people can do. And most of the superheroes use their superpowers to do great things, to help people, and to do just really cool things. And you know what? We love watching superhero movies because the truth is, I know, for me and probably for a lot of you, we all wish that we were stronger or faster or braver than we really are. And we, when we watch a superhero movie, it's exciting because we can watch that happen. Well, the truth is, especially for kids and for some grown-ups too, we often feel like we're just not strong enough. Like we're not strong enough to do what we want to do. We feel like we're just too weak. Like. Sometimes as kids, we might need grown-ups to help us with some heavy lifting or you know, doing big jobs or helping us in like scary or dangerous situations. And 
sometimes it feels, it can feel kind of like a bummer when you feel like you're too weak for things. It can feel kind of disappointing because you wish you were stronger. But guess what? The Bible tells us something super important. It actually tells us that it's better sometimes, it's better to be in our weakness and rely on God's strength because when we're weaker, God can show us just how strong and powerful He is. It's a great way for God to show His strength and His power when we're too weak to do it ourselves because we need His strength and power to do that. See in our Bible story today about Samson, God shows His, his amazing strength when He gives Samson the strength he needs in his mo most weakest times. And so that is something that we're going to learn today that's super important. So let's look at our first point today and it says to us, we all have strengths and weaknesses. And that's so true. We all have strengths and weaknesses. We all have things that we're really, really good at, things that we can do really well. Like what are some things you can do really well? Like maybe you're a super fast runner, or maybe you can play an instrument really good, or maybe you sing really good, or you can draw pictures that are super cool. Things that we're good at, things that we do really well, are our strengths. And it's really important that we all have things that we're really good at, things that we can be just excited about, and just things that we're good at. That's an important thing. God created us all to have strengths. But it doesn't stop there, because we all have weaknesses too. We all have things we're not so good at. Maybe you don't run really fast, or you've never learned how to play an instrument, or maybe you, you're just, you don't like to read. There's just some things that we're not so good at, and those could be called our weaknesses, things we're not good at. And God created us all with different strengths and different weaknesses. What might be my strength might be someone else's weakness, and what I might be weak at, my weakness, might be somebody else's strength. And that's the way God made us, so that's the way it's supposed to be. But guess what? Even though we all have limits, I mean, all of us are really good at something, we all have some great strengths, but even though we all have some strengths. There's something super important I want you to know, and that's our next point. And it says, God's strength never runs out. See, even if I'm a really good runner and I can really run fast, eventually it's gonna run out, and I'm gonna get tired and have to stop. My strength will run out. But God's strength never runs out. See, God, that's one way that God is different from us. He doesn't have any weaknesses. God has all strength and no weaknesses. Instead, God has an unlimited supply of strength and power, an unlimited supply. You know what that means? Just like I said, it means it never ever runs out. His strength is not only unending and never runs out, but it is invincible. See, God is stronger and greater than anyone ever has been or anyone ever will be. God's strength and power is the ultimate. It is the greatest of all. See, it will always exist. It's always there for us. Now that's what I call a superpower. Strength that never runs out. God is the ultimate superhero. You know what? Whatever you're facing in life, whatever trouble that you might be in, are you finding that you're in some trouble? Whatever trouble that you're in, God is stronger and God is bigger than any trouble we're in. He's bigger than bullies at school. God is bigger than having a hard time with, with grades at school. God is bigger than sickness. God is bigger than trouble in your family. See, God's bigger and stronger than any trouble that we could be facing. Even though we could face some really, really tough troubles, God is stronger. He's always stronger, no matter what we're facing. He is strong and He is mighty and He is there for each and every one of you. So let's look at our power verse a little closer right now. Let's read that together and it says, My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. Wow, look at that first part of that. It says, My grace is all you need. All you need is God. I know that sounds really simple, but it is so true. All we need is God. When we're facing tough, difficult, dangerous situations, scary things, God is there with you and God has all the strength that we need. His grace is all that we need. Let's look at the next part of our verse again and that tells us that my power works best in weakness. God is telling us that His power works best in our weakness because when we are weak, 
he is strong. And that's our next point, so read that with me. It says, when we are weak, he is strong. Now who remembers the song, Jesus Loves Me? I bet a lot of you have sang that song before. It tells us that Jesus loves us, the Bible tells us that, and then there's a line that says, we are weak, but he is strong. Do you remember singing that? Maybe you just sang it earlier today. Maybe you've sang it recently. See, we love the part where it says God is strong, but the part where it says he is strong when we are weak, that isn't quite as exciting, is it? But it is so true because God says that he can work best in our lives when we let him be our strength because we're weak and we look to him for our strength and we can rely on him because that is when he can show us his strength and his power in our lives. See, the Bible tells us that it is actually better when we recognize that we're weak and God is strong to allow him to be our strength. That can be pretty exciting actually to know that even though I'm weak, I don't have to be strong because God will be strong for me. I think that is pretty awesome. So we need to remember that, boys and girls. We need to remember that it's okay when we're weak. God wants us to show him our weakness, but he can be our strength. And God can use his mighty power and his mighty strength in our lives when we are in trouble and when we need him. When we're weak, he's strong. When we face troubles that are just too big or too hard for us to handle on our own, that's when God can be our strength. And he wants to be our strength because God's strength is perfect. God's strength is perfect, it's unlimited, it's invincible, and it's greater than any other strength. And He has that strength for you, boys and girls, because He loves you so very much. God loves you so much that He wants you to show Him your weakness so that He can be strong for you. So let's remember that this week, boys and girls, and I encourage you every day this week to spend some time with God. Spend some time with God. Maybe you're reading your Bible or you're listening to some worship music or maybe you do devotions as a family. And remember each and every day to talk to God, to pray and to talk to God and just thank Him for His strength, that He gives you the strength that you need for every single day. So in a moment, we're gonna do rewind. So let you get ready for that and see what you remember from today's lesson. What you gotta know? So here we go with question number one. What you gotta know today? I've got the power. God makes me strong. I may be weak, but my God is strong. And the answer is, I may be weak, but my God is strong. Question number two. Who is the strongest man in the Bible? Was it Samson, Samuel, or Scooter? And it was Samson. Question three, who did Samson fall in love with? Was it Dana, Delilah, or Darla? And Samson fell in love with Delilah. Question four, who paid Delilah to trick Samson into telling her the secret to his power? Did she trick Samson's friend, the Philistines, or Delilah's mom? And it was the Philistines. Question five, true or false? When they cut Samson's hair, he became even stronger. And the answer to that is false. Question six, what happened when God gave Samson strength one last time? Nothing, he didn't use it, or the temple fell on the enemies. And the temple fell on the enemies and defeated the Philistines one final time. And question seven, according to our lesson today, we all have what and what? Strengths and weaknesses, hands and feet, good days and bad days. Well, I think those are all true, but according to our lesson today, we all have strengths and weaknesses. According to our lesson today, God's strength, what, runs out? Always, never, or sometimes. And we learned today that God's strength never runs out. Question nine, according to our lesson today, when we are what, he is what? Quiet and loud, small and big, or weak and strong? When we are weak, he is strong. And our final question, question number 10, where was our power verse found? 
Was it 2 Corinthians 12, 9, 1 Chronicles 1, 10, or Job 1, 4? Our power verse was 2 Corinthians 12, 9. So how did you do, boys and girls? It was so fun today learning all about how God created all of us to have strengths and weaknesses and how God's strength never runs out and he always has the strength and the power to help us when we are in trouble. So remember that this week, boys and girls. So before we go into some fun praise and worship today and just show God how very much we love him, let's take a moment and pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for each and every boy and girl who are watching today. I just pray your blessing over them, Father, that you will help them to celebrate their strengths and to know the great gifts that you gave them and the things that they can do really well. And also to celebrate their weaknesses, Father, the areas that they're not so good at things in and that we can let you be our strength in our times of weakness. We, I pray, God, that each and every boy and girl will find time to spend with you this week, that they will just show you how much that they love you and that your love can reflect in their lives, God. Be with them this week, keep them safe, keep them healthy, and bring them back to church very soon. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, boys and girls, this is time for praise and worship, so stand up and find some space. I hope you have a great week. May you feel the love of Jesus in your hearts and in your lives every single day this week, and I look forward to seeing you next week. I love you very much. Have a great week. Presence of